everyone, welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be doing a glamorized version of Pris from the original Blade Runner movie, one of the most iconic neo-noir sci-fis of all time. The sequel's coming out this week, so I thought it was the perfect time to do this sort of glam rock version of Pris. I will be showing you guys the costume and everything in this video. If you enjoy this video, be sure to rate and comment. It really helps other people find it. And if you really enjoy it, be sure to subscribe. I am currently doing my foundation routine. This is a very full coverage foundation routine. You don't have to do anything quite this dramatic if you're not into that. The foundation portion of this is not important to be honest with you guys. You can do whatever you want. You could do no foundation. In my case, I just like a good foundation face and I thought it would help me look a little more like Pris, which is supposed to be an extremely beautiful replicant. I am using a bunch of full coverage products. I will have a list of everything I used in the description box if you'd like to check them out. One thing I do think is pretty important is using an HD silica powder to set everything because this is colorless and textureless. It's not going to add any cakiness and in fact it's going to photograph really beautifully which is why I love using this powder for any kind of you know special effects makeup or any kind of face painting or anything like that. What I'm using for face painting today is from Wolf. This is a really great water activated face paint, kind of similar in concept to like those watercolor paints you'd have as a kid. I realized after I started mixing up the paint that I hadn't sketched out my mask though, so that is what I'm doing right now. I wanted to follow the hollow of my eye, but instead of keeping it kind of round and how it is naturally, I wanted to make it angular. We are creating the effect of a shadow sort of kind of. Um, in the movie what she does, I think she takes like an airbrush or spray paint or something and sprays it on her eye. I don't have an airbrush right now and I wanted to do something a little different anyway. So this is what I am doing. The top edge doesn't matter as much. I'm still gonna kind of create a little bit of stylization to the top edge instead of just doing a straight across line. But honestly, it doesn't matter because it's not gonna show. Why am I using a white eyeliner instead of a black eyeliner? Because if you make a boo-boo, on purpose or by accident, it's really easy to clean up. And I just wanted to show you guys that it's one of the reasons why a lot of times when you watch Halloween videos, people sketch things out with a white liner. It's just easier to go over. And when you have a nice opaque face paint like this, it's just gonna completely cover it up. So this is the Wolf, as I said, the Wolf um, effects artist face paint stuffy majig stuff thing. I'll have it linked in the description bar down below for you guys. Uh, I just think it's a fantastic face paint and I've used so many over the years and this is by far my favorite. It's incredibly opaque. It's incredibly uh, smooth. It looks great on the skin. You don't have to layer and layer and layer to get it to be opaque. I mean you can see how crazy opaque it is with like one swipe uh, and it plays well with the eye area too. Like some of them don't play so well with the eye area and this one tends to work really well. So go ahead and fill that in and once you start looking like the Hamburglar, you know you're on your way. And I also put that on my eyelids and all that nice stuff. Although I used a different brush, something a little softer to kind of work it in a bit more. Then I took a little bit of the paint and this really cool brush, which is almost like a duo fiber brush. That's what it reminds me of, like where there's like dense brushes at the bottom and then they're sparse on the top. And I use that to create a fringe effect to the mask. So you start slow, you kind of make it a little bit more uniform and even and just layer and layer and layer and layer and layer. There's like smudges around my nose area. Don't worry about those little smudges. We're gonna cover them up. It doesn't matter, it's okay. So um, literally just layering and layering of the fringe. I got this idea because I thought, well, we're creating a shadow and the fringe of my hair would be the thing that's creating the shadow, so why not make it fringy? I tried a bunch of different versions of this makeup before I settled on this one. I tried ones where I add, added like glitter and eyeshadow and really fun stuff and, and a different eye look, and this is what I actually thought looked best. Um, so the great thing about this makeup is you can take liberties with it and kind of make it your own and do whatever you want. What I'm doing now is adding these little streaks. These are, I don't know, mascara streaks sweat streaks. I don't know, but I like them. I think they look kind of cool. Then I took a blue paint to create the mimic of the way that shadow can look sometimes a little bit more blue toned. Um, I did this both top and bottom. If I had it to do over again, I'd probably do the blue first and then put the black on top. I'm using that same HD silica powder to set the face paint. And this is what I was talking about. There's no color. There's hardly any texture. It just kind of knocks down the shine a little tiny bit. And then to make my po eyes pop just a little bit more, I used that same white pencil to really make the inner rims pop. And that's it. I kept it really simple. It doesn't need to be overly dramatic or anything. We're gonna be adding so many crystals and stuff. That's all that's necessary. 
One thing I find helpful when I'm doing something like this is to go ahead and pop on the wig and see how it's looking. And it looks a little bit like Lady Gaga mixed with Sia and I am here for it. So I decided it was time to start gluing on crystals and I started out with some of the sequins that came with uh, some Pat McGrath makeup that I bought if you've ever seen any reviews of that or anything that comes with all these like millions of crystal or not crystals um, sequins so I decided this would be a good time to bust them out now now I'm gluing crystals these are some Swarovski crystals in different sizes and shapes and colors and just having fun with it um, there's really no rhyme or reason or way to like tutorially be like and then I placed it there and then there and then, oh, and then I put a sequin. The, like I said, there's no real rhyme or reason. You're kind of just going through and doing what feels right in the moment and just kind of um, filling in sparse spots and mixing, making sure there's like a mix of textures of like crystals and sequins and glitter. And the glitters that I'm using are from Black Moon Cosmetics. They are a really fantastic product. It can be used in the lips, or the eyes, or like I'm doing here, like little crystally blurbs. I also use the Moon Topper, which is intended for the lips, but it can be used for whatever. Next is contour, and I'm using Lunatic Cosmetics Contour Palette, my favorite contour palette. And I'm doing a bit more than I would normally do, and I'm going to actually try to square out my jaw, so I'm gonna take that contour down my cheek a bit. This felt really weird, but it actually worked out quite well. It looks very naturalistic because this powder blends really well. And then I even blended a little bit of the contour on either side of my chin to make it look a little bit more angular because Daryl Hannah's face is just way more angular than mine. But you can kind of get that effect with contour. I went subtle with the contouring. I didn't want to go like mega mega. That's just my personal preference. Uh, and then for my lips, I used, I'm trying to think. I think this is Boldly Bear Lip Liner from MAC. That tends to be my favorite peachy nude lip liner, so that's probably what it was, but I can't honestly remember. I did overfill my lips because Daryl Hannah's lips are much more juicy and luscious, and we're trying to get that pleasure model replicant look. So I also added some gloss from Fenty Beauty. Um, yeah, and that will kind of even out the lines of the lip liner that I had and make them not so obvious, but you'll still have that fullness. I applied the lip gloss outside my lip borders as well, and at first this felt like really wrong and foreign to me, but I ended up liking it. It's kind of sexy. So the costume to me is sort of what I would call a closet costume because this is things that you may already have in your closet or things that you may wear again in some other way. The top is a mesh top I've had from Forever 21 for several years that I wore a, uh, just a plain tank top and tucked the straps since so they wouldn't show. The leggings are from Charlotte Russe. They're not available anymore, but you can find something similar on Curvy Sense. I got a pair of leg warmers from Amazon, a pair of black flats that I have had for a while that, you know, they're nondescript. It really doesn't matter terribly. I did want to show you that this is the suspender on that was functional, which is kind of cool. I picked up this wig on amazon.com. Uh, I liked the idea of doing something a little different from the movie. It saws a spiky look to it, but it's also wavy and much more fluffy than the hair that Pris is wearing in the movie. I added a leopard print jacket, which is from an iconic scene in the movie. Um, I added a dog collar, which is also something that Pris is wearing. And I just enjoyed the crap out of making this for you guys. I hope that you enjoyed it as well. Please let me know your thoughts, feelings, comments, concerns in the comment section down below. I'm so excited to hear what you guys think of this. Please be sure to rate this video. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And be sure to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more. I have so much in store for you guys this year. And I will see you guys in my next video. See you next time. Bye.